aimed at the ultimate result of what? Why do you produce? So somebody will consume. But the consumption, consumption is the elimination of something. It is, in a sense, destruction. Right? You eat an ice cream, it's gone. But to eat that ice cream, you had to have a job to get money to buy the ice cream, and somebody had to manufacture the ice cream. So this real simple observation about economics, somebody has to make the stuff, stuff has to be made, is the argument against stimulus packages. You don't want to stimulate consumption. What you want to stimulate, if you're going to stimulate anything, is job creation, which means production. You want to stimulate anything, you want to stimulate entrepreneurship, business creation, business expansion, business investment, employment. That is what creates wealth. That is what raises the standard of living. That is what makes people rich and what makes economies prosper. It's production, production, production. Consumption is easy. Once you produce the stuff, you tell people you produce the stuff, and the stuff is any good, people will buy it. I mean, you have to have the right price and the right marketing and all of that. But if you do a decent job, people will buy it. So production is what makes economies thrive. Production is what makes life possible. The other thing is to remember, and this is a, a basic point about human nature, other animals live and thrive just on what nature provides. You know, the lion chases down the antelope and eats it. The antelope was there. It always will be there. And the antelope goes away. He'll chase down, I don't know, some other animal and eat it. But it's just stuff is there. The stuff the animal needs in order to survive is there. And when it's not there, the animal dies. Human beings don't work that way. Human beings change their environment to fit their needs. Human beings produce. It's what makes us uniquely human. And why the environmentalist movement is so full of it. Because the production is only possible by changing our environment, by using the environment to satisfy our needs. So we look at the world. We don't just take the antelope. We breed antelopes, breed chickens, we breed cows, and we eat them. We produce. We don't just pick the nuts and the berries. We create agriculture. And now we have unlimited food. We change our environment. We change our environment to suit our needs. That is the uniquely human way of survival, of thriving. So the environment there is for us to manipulate, to change, to exploit for the sake of human life. That's how human beings survive. And we're part of nature. So that's what nature gave us through evolution as our means of survival, as our means of living, as our means of thriving. And if we need to, we, we modify our, yeah, we modify the genetics of our food to make it better, to make it more nutritious, to make it more plentiful. So the unique way in which human beings survive is through production. Who? Production. And economics should be. Economics, even good economists, so often assume, so often assume that stuff is just out there and now it's all a question of distributing it. You know, when economists say, even good economists, Thomas Sowell, for example, they say economics is a study of, I don't know, allocation of resources under scarcity. No! <laughs> there is no scarcity. Not in any kind of meaningful sense. The study of economics is about how we don't have scarcity. The study of economics is the study of production. It's the study of creation. It's a study of turning things that are useless for human beings into things that are useful for human beings. 
So economics is the study, in my view, if you want to define economics, is the study of production and trade. There's no scarcity in that definition. The amount of goods is determined by supply and demand. And demand is not scarce at any given price. There is, the, the supply is not scarce. At any given price, there's enough supply to meet the demand. But there is no scarce resources. I mean, Julian Simon showed this. We don't have scarce resources. The only resource we actually have, the only, oh, we don't have limited resources. They, 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 they're scarce in a sense, but that's, but resources are not what we consume. Resources are not what makes economics interesting. What makes economics interesting is how you turn those resources into an iPhone. The iPhone is what's interesting. The production of the iPhone in is interesting. The supply chain of the iPhone is interesting. The marketing and sales of the iPhone is interesting. The supply and demand for iPhones is interesting. Competition to the iPhone is interesting. The raw materials, who cares? That's not economics. It's not the interesting part of economics. It's not the important part of economics. So yes, natural resources are scarce. Who cares? It doesn't matter. What matters is the productive genius, is productive geniuses taking those resources and turning it into something useful for human beings. That's economics. So economics is the study, should be, is the study of production and trade. So think about all the stimulus package. Think about the way government approaches this. We'll shut you all down. We'll keep you home. We'll destroy your jobs. Well, we've got, what, 20 million people unemployed going to 30? 20% 20 unemployment rate soon? We're going to destroy the economy. We're going to destroy production. But don't worry. We're going to hand you checks. We're going to give you money. And you'll feel just as rich. But what's that money going to buy me? I can't go to a restaurant. I can't get elective surgery. I can't, go I can't do a, a huge number of things that I would want to do. So what, what's money used for? Yeah, well, you can buy food. Okay, so you're keeping people making food by executive order, by the way, by force, I guess so that I can spend the money you gave me on that food. And then what? When does it end? So stimulus packages are useless. They're transferring money from one pocket to another pocket. They are destruction of production. They are trying to ignore, trying to ignore the laws of economics. And we will pay a huge price for this, a huge price for the stimulus package, for the whole economic program that the Trump administration with, uh, with Nancy Pelosi have come up in order to try to invigorate the U.S. economy. All right, so remember, in economics... It has to start with production, and if, they, if it's not, then, then it's not economics. It doesn't make any sense. It's completely useless. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the Super Chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today.
Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...